this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is an installation guide for Lee and Lee's SL120 Infinity fans. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the different ways you can connect up these fans. Now, Lee and Lee's changed the design of the SL Uni fans, so the SL Infinity fans, the Uni fan SL Infinity 120 RGB, are slightly different from the previous SL120s in the way they connect up. So they have a slightly different connector and the single and triple packs are ever so slightly different. There are also different specs. I'm going to do a full video comparing the two fans and talking a bit more depth about them as well as showing an installation in the Air Mini from Lee and Lee in a separate video. But in this one, I wanted to show you the wiring and the logic for it so you can get an idea of how it works and what you can do with it in your case and in your build. So Lee and Lee's fans come in two different packages. You can either get them in a single pack with one fan and the various things that you need, or in a triple pack with multiple fans included and a control box. More on that later on. But what I want to do is talk to you about how you can set them up if you've only bought the single fans. So if you bought one fan, several packets of single fans, then this is the process for basically installing them and the thought process that goes into it. Because it's actually possible to use these without a control box, assuming that you have the right motherboard and the connections and the capabilities. So these are fairly straightforward fans to install and the joy of the uni fans is their connectivity and the way they click together. Now if you don't know already, the infinity fans are also nicely upgraded because they feature an infinity mirror on the front side and on the sides as well. So on the front and on the sides, you have this nice mirror which you will have seen at the beginning and you'll see some of later on, which essentially allows for some really nice RGB lighting. In the package, you also get some small fan screws and the necessary connector. So this is one of the changes that Lee and Lee has made. The connector now is ever so slightly different, which is actually useful in several ways. It connects in the middle, but it's also smaller. So it's not interchangeable with the previous connectors. And it's also different in the way it connects up to your PC. So you'll see a chunky little connector that connects in the middle of the fan there. And I'll give you a close up look at that in a minute. Now for the moment, it's also worth noting when you're going through the installation process, there's multiple different protective stickers, both on the fan center and on the side for the infinity mirrors. Make sure you remove those. They are a little bit fiddly and some of them come off in a really annoying way. This one was quite successful, but a number of the others that I pulled off ended up sort of tearing a little bit and being a bit fiddly to get off. But you do need to take those off to make the most of that infinity mirror. And there are some really nice looking fans on any of those sides that will be visible in your case. So really good looking fans. And the connectors to hold them together are also very similar to the previous uni fans. One of the joys of these fans is they can be grouped up and connected together with relative ease. So you'll see there are clips down the sides that basically slot in together. And I'll show you that in a second, but you can put them together in groups of four. Now, a little look at the connector. So another close up look here at it. You'll notice it's quite a chunky little thing. But on top, you'll also notice another highlight to it is that you can slide that cover off. And then what it's allowing you to do there is actually to flip the direction that the cables are going in. So this connector only goes onto the fan in one way. So you can only attach it in one direction. But what you can do is you can turn the cables around and push them to face the other way. This can be useful for the direction of the cabling in your case. So it's worth bearing in mind sort of the position where the fans are going and then where the cable is going to run so it can help with cable management. It can also be useful in other ways. There's a note on the instructions, for example, on how to deal with this and think about the use in terms of tubing on a liquid cooled system. Also, some of the connectors are removable for the same reasons. If you're thinking about installing them on radiators, you can also take off the connectors, which is pretty interesting as well. So very flexible fans with a really nice design. Now the highlights of these fans is obviously connectivity because they are interconnectable. So you can see notches on each of the fans and basically they can be slotted together with relative ease. And this is one of the joys of this process is where traditional RGB fans require 
two cables from each fan in order to be connected up to your PC, either daisy chained or ran to a controller. So I've done a video recently on how to connect up Corsair's RGB fans. Those fans are a lot more fiddly and a lot more faff to do because you have two cables from each fan. With the Lian Li setup, you can connect four fans in sequence, or here I'm doing three, for example. Most cases, you'll probably just use three as a maximum. And then you connect up the single connector with just two cables on it. So here I'm going to show you what to do with two groups of three to start with. And then I'll go into a bit more depth on what to do if you've got more fans as well. You can see a lot of those stickers. Don't forget to take those off before you go back to the installation. But you'll see slotting them together is really straightforward. You basically just line the notches up where they need to go and you can't really get them the wrong way around because the pins and the connectors are designed so it's impossible to put them together wrong which is brilliant so you can see them connected up nicely and now I've got two groups of three now with the three group connected together obviously you need to find the end that's going to have the cable connecting on it and it's only at one end so you can't get that wrong but again don't forget that this will only go on in one direction so if you find as I did that it won't go on that's because you've got it the wrong way around so it's a little bit fiddly initially to set up but it is fairly straightforward you can see that it has some clips on it and then the connections that are necessary to power the cable so this cable takes both the power and the RGB lighting of the fans and runs it into your case and connects it up to your motherboard and I'll show you the connections on the motherboard in a second. As I said the direction of where the fans are going to be mounted is obviously the direction that the cables are going to face. You need to work out which sort of direction that's going into and you can flip them around if necessary to make things a little bit neater in your case which is actually a very nice intelligently thought out design that uh, is really really handy and very useful to have so really simple but this is the correct position of that connector and how to slot it in it looks fiddly but it actually is quite easy once you get the hang of it so now we have three fans nicely connected up interlocked and then with the cables and you notice there are two separate cables one is for rgb lighting and one is for power so if you have a recent motherboard you will likely find several system fan headers and rgb headers on the motherboard this takes a three pin five volt rgb header so look for the markings for j rainbow is usually the marker or RGB or ARGB and assume that it has a 5 volt marking next to it. So what you want is the 3 pin connector not the 4 pin. You'll often find that motherboards have a 4 pin 12 volt connector. Obviously you cannot plug that cable into there. It only has slots for 3 pins. It will be impossible to do. A close up look and you'll see the connections here. So you can see the rainbow one slightly at the back of this shot and then the system fan header close by. So the system fan header, make sure you find a sys fan header on your motherboard and connect the power cable up. You will find that there's usually multiple of these. So theoretically you can connect up more than one group of fans to one of these headers. Just bear in mind the amount of power that each one will put out. And ideally you want to look for a PWM controllable header because then that will give you control over the fan speed. But here you can see me pushing in the J Rainbow connection. It is a little bit fiddly. Take care in how you're putting it in because it is really easy to accidentally bend the pins on the motherboard from these connections I've found. Now we have two groups of fans set up and I'm going about the same logic. So I have multiple different J Rainbow 5 volt headers on this motherboard. So you can actually theoretically connect up more than one group. So I'm doing the same thing, but connecting those cables at the bottom. So there you can see at a basic level, it is possible with just six single packs of fans to connect up six fans in groups onto your motherboard. So it is plausible to be able to do that. But what if you need to install more fans? You're unlikely to have more than two J Rainbow connections. However, you possibly could get an RGB splitter cable. So that is one option. You could potentially get a splitter cable separately. They're not included in the box, but you may be able to find and purchase a cable separately that would allow you to then loop 
the cables together, essentially daisy chaining the RGB from two groups of fan into one. The other alternative is to purchase a triple pack. So the triple pack comes with this control box. This control box is used to basically give the power and the RGB lighting to groups of fans. It can control up to 16 SL120 Infinity fans in groups of four. So you have four groups of four plugged into here. You'll also notice there are two additional headers at the top, which is Sync 1 and Sync 2. These can be used for RGB connections from something like the Galahad cooler which is worth bearing in mind. This has two SATA power connections on it, so you need to plug that into the power supply unit. And it also has a micro USB cable. This USB cable needs to be plugged in so that you can control the fan's lighting via L-Connect. And that's worth noting the difference is this control box gives you control over the RGB lighting via L-Connect. If you're using the rainbow connections or the RGB headers on your motherboard solely for the RGB lighting, then the RGB will be controlled from your motherboard software instead. Now there's also another cable that plugs in, a small cable with two connections on it. This is for the system fan header and the RGB cable. That's the same logic that we were using when we had the single fans earlier on in the video. Basically, one of these allows you to control the fan speed of all the fans directly from your motherboard software instead of from L-Connect. So it gives you options. And then the RGB connection does the same sort of logic with the RGB lighting. So it gives you two different options in terms of controlling the fan speed and the RGB. In the triple pack you'll also find you get a different sort of connector. So you have the same sort of connection on the fan but at the other end you have this flat chunky connection instead. Now rather than having two separate cables you have one cable that controls both the power and the RGB lighting. Obviously this is what is required to plug into the control box. Now it's worth noting that as I said you can control up to 16 fans in groups of four. You can only plug in four groups into this controller and obviously you're mostly unlikely to be using them in groups of four. So for example in the case that I'm building I have three groups of two of these SL120 fans and then I also have another group of three and then a single fan at the bit back. Obviously this means that I can't possibly connect up all those cables to this single control box. It's impossible to do so this is a problem. In this demonstration I'm assuming that you have a larger case so three groups of three and then a single fan at the back. This is one potential way to do it. And obviously you can connect it up this way. So what I'm doing here is essentially I'm connecting up each of the three groups with the three different adapters of the three fans. And then the single fan also connects up to the control box. So each of the fans is now being plugged into the controller and being controlled that way. This is obviously a lot more straightforward than trying to use splitters and system fan headers on your motherboard to power multiple different fans. So if you got up to this level and you have this many fans, obviously getting a triple pack makes life a lot easier. It's also worth noting that if you bought two triple packs, obviously you'd have two controllers. So if you had potentially loads of fans or a weird logic of fans where you had multiple groups of two, for example, if you're doing push-pull on a small radiator, then that might be a consideration. Now, with the control box plugged into all the fans, you obviously also need to connect up the other cables. So one of them is the USB connection that plugs into the motherboard and the system fan header and the RGB connection. You don't necessarily need to connect all of these. For example, if you just connect the USB connection, that will mean that L-Connect has control of both the fan speed and the RGB lighting. However, if you want the ability to control the RGB lighting and sync it with your motherboard's RGB lighting, then you use this RGB connection. Again, this is the 5 volt RGB header, so look for the markings on your motherboard or refer to your manual for that. But this is essentially a J Rainbow connection on this motherboard with three pins on it. You plug that in there, and then if you go into your motherboard software, for example, MSI Center or Asus's Armory Crate, you can then have RGB control in there, and that'll sync the lighting with other RGB things on your motherboard, whether that's RGB RAM, RGB strips, 
or other devices. Now the system fan header, if you find a system fan header with PWM control, that will allow you to have fan speed control via the motherboard software as well. So you can control it from both the BIOS and from your software for your motherboard. So it gives you different control options. You can plug in both or you can choose one or the other. Next stage is obviously to go about installing the fans in your case. I'm not going to go into that now. I have done a separate video on this case and how to set it up. But this is just a glance at the setup logic for the fan wiring. Obviously, we're then running the cables to the back of the case. So I've been demonstrating previously how to do it outside of the case just to show you the logic in a really easy to understand way. But when you've put them in the case, run the cables to the back and plug them all into the control box. So I have the four groups here being plugged in with relative ease. And then you just need to make sure to remember to plug in the last bits. So it's really important that you plug in at least the USB header and the power, if nothing else. So you need the two connections. So, so the one thing of note is this control box requires two SATA power connections. So those are the flat connections that go to the power supply unit. That ensures that both the fans have the RGB lighting and the necessary power for the fan speed as well. Obviously, you have a lot of fans connected to this control box. You need to make sure that they've got the juice in order to spin. So tidying up all those cables and making sure everything's set up now also this control box has a sticker that allows you to stick it on the back of your case in this one though i'm using the hard drive tray just to tuck that away but here you can see the flat power connectors and how to connect those up once that's done, it's just a case of powering it on and downloading L-Connect direct from Lee and Lee. And it's worth knowing that when I first did this, the fans weren't spinning when I first turned my PC on until I got into Windows and downloaded and installed L-Connect. So the control box may well need updating. If the fans are connected directly to the system motherboard fan headers, and it isn't an issue, that rear fan at the back, for example, that was connected to the motherboard was spinning on its own without any problems. So if you do notice they're not spinning, don't panic. Just update the software to get it running. Another point of note is that if you are using RGB control directly from the motherboard, you will need to use your system software in order to customize the RGB lighting, and you probably won't have as many effects. There are a lot of effects with the SL Infinity fans, and I'm going to go into more depth on those in the unboxing and review video. Hopefully this one's been useful to you though. Smash that subscribe button and drop me a comment if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.